Kia ora koutou. So far in this course, we've spent quite a lot of time looking at vectors. Um, so we learned a bit, a bit about geometry of these and how we can use them to describe geometrical things like lines and planes. And then we took a bit of a detour into looking at matrices. Um, well, we only looked at matrices in the sense that they are considered to be a shorthand for writing down systems of linear equations. But what we're going to do next in the course is to kind of take a little bit more of a sophisticated view of what matrices are. We're going to think about how matrices and vectors operate together and look at some other ways that these things can actually be used. Okay, so we kind of hinted at this perspective when we looked at the matrix vector product and we're going to sort of take that as our platform to start off and then explore from there. So let's just quickly recall some of the key players, if you like, that we've encountered in the course so far. So first off, we have our vector x in Rn. He carries n numbers and he's willing to use them. Then we had matrices. So here's a matrix A, which we sometimes write as being an R m times n. That's an m times n matrix, m rows and n columns. These bad boys, they contain m times n numbers, arranged, as we said, in m rows and n columns. Now, so far, their interaction has been limited to just the matrix vector product of an m by n matrix with a vector in Rn. And if we did that, um, then we found that our result y is also is a vector in Rm. So we could write that down just to sort of refresh our memories. If we have y equals a times x, we can write our matrix A down as, a, as a1, a2 through to an, where they are the columns of a, um, times x, which is x1, x2 through to xn. See how the number of columns of A has to equal the number of entries in X. And that's just the linear combination X1 times A1 plus X2 times A2 plus all the way up to Xn times An. So AI just represents column I of A in this picture. Now before we study the interaction between matrices and vectors any further, it turns out that we can actually define matrix addition subtraction and scalar multiplication in pretty much the same way as we do for vectors. So for matrix addition and subtraction, we just require that the matrices are the same size. And just like with vectors, we add or subtract corresponding entries. So for example, if I take the matrix 1, 3, negative 1, 2, 1, 0, and subtract the matrix 0, 4, negative 2, 1, 3, negative 1, I get the matrix 1, negative 1, 1, 1, negative 2, 1. And just, the, just as for addition and subtraction, scalar multiplication also works similarly to vectors. We just multiply everything in the matrix by that same scalar. So for example, 3 times the matrix negative 1, 2, negative 2, 3, just equals negative 3, 6, and negative 6, 9. Now this is not really surprising because Really, we're just kind of treating matrices as vectors who've been rearranged. So they, would, they, I suppose, would be in R, M, N. So we're just writing them down in a slightly different way. Now, where things start to get fundamentally quite different is with multiplication. So with vectors, we had a dot product between two vectors, which just gave us a number. And then we had a special case in R3 where we had the cross product. Now, matrices, it turns out, have a genuine product that also returns a matrix. And it's not just multiplying corresponding entries together. So before we can understand why this weird definition that we're going to get soon makes any sense, we have to think of our matrices as transformations. So when we took that matrix vector product A times X, it produces another vector Y. So we can think of the matrix A as something who eats up a vector or takes in a vector x and produces, or I get poops out, I suppose, another vector y. So in a sense, our matrix has transformed our vector x into y when we multiplied by it. So what we want to understand to understand multiplication is that if a matrix B, for example, transforms a vector x and then another matrix A comes along and transforms the result, then we get an expression like a times the vector bx, um, which we can hopefully write down as abx. Now what we'd like to know is if ab can actually be written down as a single matrix, i.e. can those two transformations be wrapped up together in one single matrix operation? 
And if it can, that will define what our matrix times matrix product will be. All right, so we're going to try this out with a couple of two by two matrices. Now you might want to take a breather uh, right now because the calculation, although it's not hugely difficult, gets quite lengthy. So we're going to start with a b a times bx and try to work our way to a single matrix vector product, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Well, I suppose we'd better not procrastinate, so let's get to it. Actually, maybe just do a uh, quick stretch first. Just check maybe, is your, is your desk tidy? You might want to check if your desk is tidy and your plants are watered. Um, did you make your bed this morning? You might want to just check that as well. Um, ha have you thought of starting a 5k running plan recently? Maybe we should look up those and do the first one of those. No, don't be silly. We need to focus. So maybe... Before I do that, I'll just check my email. No, don't check your emails real quick. We're going to stay on task and we're going to try and bash this thing out. Here we go. So A times B times X. I'm just going to write it down with all our matrices. So they're going to be two by twos. I'll have A11, A12, A21, A22 for A. And I'll write these ones down in red. B11, B12, B21, B22 for our matrix B in blue. And then X1, X2. For our vector. So what I'll do first is I'll expand the matrix vector product on the right hand side there with the B and the X. So my A will stay how it is, I'll just be left alone for now, and I'll replace my BX with X1 times the first column plus X2 times the second column of B. And now what I'll do is I'll write that matrix vector product just down as a single vector. So once again I'll leave the matrix A how it was before and my vector is going to become B11x1 plus B12x2, and then B21x1 plus B22x2. Right, so now what we have actually is a matrix vector product again, because our matrix is now A, and our vector is that slightly more complicated blue and black thing on the right there. So once again, we can take, we can consider that to be a linear combination of the columns of the matrix A. So this will be b11x1 plus b12x2, that's the scalar for the first column of A, plus b21x1 plus b22x2, that's the scalar for the second column of A. This is getting pretty full on, but good news is we're kind of about halfway there. We've expanded most stuff out, now what we want to do is we want to kind of gather the x terms together to make it look like a single matrix vector product. So I'm just going to hunt down all of the x1s and I'm going to write down the things that multiply them in, as single vectors. So that will be x1 times, now it's going to be careful to find all the x1 terms in the first vector component, so it'll be a11b11 plus a12b21, in fact, sorry, other way around, I'll keep the b's and the a's in the opposite order for now, and the second one of those will be b11a21 plus b21a22. Now I'll hunt down everything multiplying x2. Again, I'll look at the top component of the vector first. So that will be b12a11 plus b22a12. Then I'll look at the second component, look at everything with an x2 in it. I get a b12a21 plus a22b22. So look, I actually have what looks like a linear combination of columns that I can do backwards and turn it into a matrix vector product. So I'm just going to write the A's and B's now in sort of the order we had them before. So that will be as a matrix, I'll just take that first vector as the first column, the second vector as the second column. So it'll be A11B11 plus A12B21, then A11B12 plus A12B22, etc, etc, all times the vector x1, x2. So that's pretty cool. What we've actually managed to do here is we've managed to replace the, those two matrices multiplying our vector x by just a single one, where a times b is that monster of a matrix that we developed by the end of our problem there. Now, actually it turns out there's some pretty good news about evaluating these things. On the face of it, that looks like quite a difficult thing to remember how to do. Um, but it's actually quite easy to do these products because each entry is actually pretty much just a dot product. For example, 
the row one, column one entry of my product is given by sort of a dot product of the first row of A and the first column of B. See how those entries get multiplied together and added? I've highlighted um, the row and the column so you can kind of see how this works. And then if I move on to, for example, the row two column one entry, then that is given by the dot product. I'm using that kind of in inverted commas uh, because it's not quite the same thing, but it pretty much is of row two of the matrix A and column one of B, etc. So if we were to kind of come up with a, a way of doing this in general, we have to be able to take these dot products of the rows of A and the columns of B, no matter what the size of our matrices are. So we can actually allow our matrices themselves to be different sizes, so long as the sizes work for taking these dot products. So in particular, one row of A has some number of entries, and that is the number of columns of A which needs to equal the number of rows of B. Now you might want to just pause and convince yourself that it has to be this, this way around before we go on. Right, so in general, if A is M by K and B is K by N, then the product of A and B, which we would just write down as AB without a symbol, is defined, and it has dimension M by n. See so the k's are the things that have to be the same for the two matrices. So let's try an example just to, to finish off this bit and see how this works in practice. So let's calculate um, the matrix 1, 2, 3, negative 1, 2, 4 times the matrix 3, 1, 1, 0, negative 1, 1. Now first off, to work out whether this matrix multiplication is defined or not, we can write the dimensions of the matrices underneath. So the inner dimensions are the ones that must match, and the size of our result is the outer dimensions. So here, A is 2 by 3, and B is 3 by 2. The inner dimensions are both 3, they match, and our matrix is therefore 2 by 2. So let's just write a little blank matrix to fill in later. So I can fill it in as follows. The 1, 1 entry of my result is the dot product of row 1, of A with column 1 of B, and is therefore 2. The row 1, column 2 entry is the dot product of row 1 of A with column 2 of B, and is therefore 4. We can continue on. The, the row 2, column 1 entry is the dot product of row 2 of A with column 1 of B, and is therefore negative 5. And the 2, 2 entry is the dot product of row 2 of A with column 2 of B, and is hence 3. So at this point in time, it just remains for you guys to, to practice doing a bunch of these until you get comfortable with them. But when it boils down to it, it's just taking a whole lot of dot products. So if you're good at doing those already, um, then matrix multiplication is not a great leap upwards. So we now have a method of multiplying matrices together. So let's just state a few properties that are important before we finish off this video. So properties of matrices, first off, a very, very important one is that A times B is not equal to B times A in general. I mean, sometimes it is. You can come up with examples where that's true. But generally speaking, that is not true. The order of multi multiplication is quite important. So if you want to test this, try generating or just writing down two different matri two by two matrices for yourself and check their products both ways. You'll find it's only in certain special cases that these two things are actually equal. Okay, next thing to note, there is a special square n by n matrix that we call the identity, which has ones down its main diagonal and zeros everywhere else. So for example, a three by three identity matrix is the matrix i equals one, zero, 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 one, zero, and zero, zero, one. This matrix has the property that a times i equals i times a, which just is a itself i.e. it's kind of like multiplying by 1, but with matrices. So it's like the matrix version of 1. And it also works on vectors too. i times x is equal to x. So you should try maybe figuring out some of these products and seeing it work for yourself. And then last, lastly, if a is square, that means it's n by n, then we can define matrix powers the way that you might expect by using matrix multiplication. For example, a cubed just means a times a times a, 
Uh, so the, the power has just got to be a positive integer. And once again, note that we don't actually don't usually use a symbol like times for matrix multiplication. We just write the matrices down side by side. Okay, so we've done quite a lot this lesson. Um, now, the last thing I'll, I'll just add before we finish, actually, is that if you're trying to, if you want to check your answers when you're practicing working on these things using MATLAB and Octave, then matrix multiplication, all you've got to do is use the times symbol. I, if you've got two matrices A and B, then you can multiply them as A star B. This is like asterisk, if you like. So addition, subtraction, and scalar multiplication, well, they'll just work exactly as they do for vectors. If the matrices are the same size, MATLAB will just do that for you. And to get, there's a shortcut for getting these identity matrices. You can just use the I as an EYE command. So for example, I of three will give you a three by three identity in Octave or MATLAB. All right, now I'm sure you're itching to get back to those chores that you didn't do when you thought of them in the middle of this video. So we'll see you in the next one. Kakita ya no.